So here now we have um, the initial layout that Page suggested given the staff size. And I can now view this side by side in uh, Acrobat. I can scroll through this whole file very quickly to see what layout is suggested. Essentially now, if, if you're used also to working with Finale, I've gone from scroll view to page view and I see for the first time what the program has suggest, suggested for my measure distribution. Now I want to push these measures around, I'm sure, because it's never just what you want. I want to be able to push measure 5 onto the second page and uh, whatever. Um, that that's what I use this PDF for for on-screen sort of a cast-off for uh, uh, adding tick marks. <coughs> excuse me, into this PDF file, uh, so that I'll come up with a, a layout scheme as to what measures I will want in what system. I do this in this PDF file simply by assigning. Um, um, little note tool bubbles, sticky notes, like down here you can see I've um, just um, assigned a hash mark in measure 4. Let's say for instance that I would say okay my first system will have measures 1 through 4 in it and then the next system will go, go through measure 8. Okay and then I'll go to the next page and I'll, I'll break at measure 12 for instance and then I'll break at measure 15 Okay, and then on the I'll break at measure 19. I put a sticky mark in there, and then I'll break at measure 24. I mean, I'm just making this up right now. And this is totally random right now. I just want to sh show you how I do my cast off on on screen. This is sort of how you would do tick marks on paper if you're doing your uh, a layout plan in advance. In this particular case, we're, we're doing our layout plan after the fact. We already have all the data in the machine, but we need to do the layout, but we'll do it in the files rather than on paper. So you see, this is how I do my tick marks, or my, my cast of marks, in this, in this particular PDF. Like that. Now you can also see the utility of having assigned these measure numbers, and Ediscore script has has made them very large and they appear at the top and they appear at the bottom They're exactly the same uh, for some reason measure one is never assigned and I don't know why that is but I don't care it's good enough that it appears in every other measure so I have two three four five six seven eight nine ten etc eleven twelve thirteen fourteen you can see they're all sequentially numbered and it makes it very easy for me uh, to read what measure numbers they are that's, w that's why I made them so large on the screen uh, some edit score script in the end is going to throw it all out and just leave the measure numbers at the beginning of the systems. Uh, but for right now, it's useful to have them all in. Uh, have them all in there. There's a total of 39 pages in this file. Uh, each page has one system, as you would expect, because it reflects one one single score page. And I, so this is the file that I work with to uh, do an initial work on in order to determine my measure distribution. Now, remember, I've also generated a MIDI file. Um, you can use that MIDI file and play it back in any MIDI software that, that you can run. You can, you can, I found out, you can actually launch the three, Windows 3.1 in DOSBox and then run the old-fashioned MIDI score uh, on that. Uh, but I find that very cumbersome, either, so I don't use that anymore uh, because, because MIDI score cannot run and uh, you know that doesn't run in CMD and it can't run by itself in DOSBox. So you're basically out of luck with that, unless you launch the entire three, uh, Windows 3.1 operating system or something in, in DOSBox, which I think is rather silly. So I I uh, use uh, Finale in order to make a MIDI playback file. Uh, that's fine. You can use Zibelius or if you have MIDI, uh, some other MIDI software, you can use that as well. I just happen to have Finale, so I use use it to. Uh, uh, make a MIDI file. Let me just launch uh, Finale 2009 for that particular purpose. And um, I'm going to open this particular MIDI file. Uh, the, the file name that's automatically generated is, by default, I call it playback.mid, and I open that. And I assign the tracks. Uh, it, it does it does recognize the P9 values, instrument 
ID 19, for instance, and 20, 18, 17, 16, and so on, so on down the line, those are all the P9 values. That is recognized, which is a useful thing to know. I don't have to memorize all these. I have them all keyed into some shortcuts. So for instrument ID 19, I just press a shortcut key for 19, and uh, it automatically uh, tells me that 19 is the flute staff. Um, 20 is the Ottavino staff. 18 is oboe, and so on and so forth. I won't do this entire process of uh, here on this video of preparing this MIDI file and finale. It's very easy to do. It takes about five minutes or so, and then I have the a complete playback file uh, with you know um, every staff assigned their own channel and they're all play playback definitions and transpositions and all that. It doesn't take very long to do that. It takes about five minutes, but I don't want to waste your time on that. So I'm going to. Um, fade uh, this video out at this point, um, create the MIDI file first and then come back on with it and, and show how I go about um, uh, not assigning my hash marks or my tick-off marks on the PDF while the MIDI file is playing in the background. So that's it for now. I'll pause for now and come back when uh, I have my MIDI file um, prepared in Finale.